so as I was saying that uh, mass can only change for the atomic particles because uh, for atomic particles when they move the mass changes it changes by mass changes by uh, this relation which is m equals to m0 divided by square root of 1 by b y c is y minus b y c whole square so you don't have to worry about this relation this is uh, in given in high order physics okay so they have just given here this is the relation that we just said now so you don't have to even memorize this relation for now so in this case the mass depends upon velocity which is a strange thing all right for example if you're moving you cannot increase in mass but here they have said that mass depends upon velocity that if you're moving then the mass will also change okay but remember this thing is only true for the atomic particles this is only true for the atomic particles and this is only true as long as the any particle which moves with the speed with the velocity of the order of 10 to the power of 6 meter per second okay which is 10 to the power of 6 meter per second it's a very high speed so usually the microscopic particle cannot move with that speed but the atomic particles can move with that speed so only we have to consider the change in mass otherwise we don't have to worry about the change in mass so uh, so the usually what happens the change in momentum is due to the change in velocity only not change in mass okay so this is the relation a rate of change of momentum next topic is rate of change of momentum when i see when a force is applied on a body its velocity changes no so force can as, as i said before force can change the velocity of a body suppose the object is moving in this direction with some velocity you apply the force in this direction then the velocity will change towards this direction okay it was only towards this apply the force along this then the velocity will change towards this direction so force can do force can change the velocity of the body so when the velocity changes obviously what will happen the momentum will change because momentum is change in momentum is m into del v delta p which is change in momentum equals to m which is constant and into delta v which is change in moment change in velocity so let f, f be the force applied on a body of mass m for time t due to which the velocity changes from u to v let's say u is the initial velocity of the body and once applied force the velocity changed by velocity change to v so v is the final velocity so initial momentum of the body is m into initial velocity final momentum of the body is m into final velocity and change in momentum of the body in t second equals to mb minus mu final momentum minus initial momentum which gives this so rate of change is obviously for time t this change is taking place so mb uh, change in momentum divided by time is the rate of change of momentum the rate of change of momentum is this so what is acceleration acceleration is defined as change in velocity divided by time okay so this is change in velocity divided by time so only if you don't have mass term this is an acceleration so acceleration equals to b minus u by t okay so rate of change of momentum is mass into acceleration we can write okay rate of change of rate of change of momentum is mass into this term is acceleration change in velocity by time so mass into acceleration so this is the relation between the change in momentum and mass into acceleration thus uh, when a force acts on the body the rate of change in momentum of a body is equal to the product of the mass of the body and the acceleration produced in it due to that force provided that the mass of the body remains constant okay so alternate method is same you don't have to go with that alternate method you can go through it it's the same thing so newton's second law of motion so newton's second law of motion what does it do newton's second law of motion uh, defines the force i'm sorry uh, newton's first law of motion defines the force only qualitatively newton's first law only qualitatively defines it we cannot measure the force from the newton's first law of motion newton's first law of motion says the force is that quantity which uh, uh, which moves the body if it is at rest or it will it will make the body at rest if it is in motion okay that means it is defined forces defined qualitatively in the uh, with the help of first law of motion but second law of motion helps to uh, define a force quantitatively okay a force is that physical cause which changes the state of the motion of the body when it is applied on it this is given by the newton's first law okay now from the first level we understood that the force is the cause of acceleration 
okay and we will see in the newton second law of motion that it gives the quantity measure of the force that means it gives the numerical formula for the force okay for which will be, which we can use to measure the force uh, in our common experience if you push a tennis ball gently a small acceleration is produced okay and it acquires a small velocity in such time if a same tennis ball is pushed harder a large acceleration is produced in it and it requires a large velocity in the same time so we have a two situation over here so more if you apply more force the more acceleration will be produced if you apply less force then less acceleration will be produced so newton found that the acceleration produced in the body is directly proportional to the force applied on it okay so directly proportional means if you apply more force more will be the acceleration similarly if you try to produce same change in velocity in the same time in a football and a tennis ball both are at rest we need to apply a larger force on the football than on a tennis ball now if we have a two ball one is football another is tennis ball so football has larger mass football is heavier than tennis ball so if you want to produce the same acceleration on both the bodies okay football also tennis ball also i want to produce the same acceleration in both of them then i have to apply more force on the football than the tennis ball that means uh more is the mass more the force you have to apply to produce the same acceleration so it's more it's more for the body of larger mass and less for the body of smaller mass okay so there is one example here so experimentally newton found that the force needed to produce same acceleration in different bodies is also proportional to their masses okay so more is the mass more is the force required to produce the same acceleration so two things newton found from the experiment okay so that he drew in the graph the acceleration produced in the body of given mass is directly proportional to the force applied so if you have a, uh, one body uh, of mass m okay mass is constant over here so more we apply force more will be the acceleration so acceleration is directly proportional to f which you can draw in this graph which is acceleration versus force graph since it is a proportional sign it has to be a straight line this is a linear graph okay also force needed to produce a given acceleration we want to produce the same acceleration in a body is directly proportional to the mass of the body so force more is the mass more is the force needed again this will be force versus mass graph which will be a straight line so from this two from this two graph you can say force is proportional to m and proportional to a First is proportional to m and proportional to m. Therefore, these are proportional to product of m into m, and we can write f equals to m a with some constant, and this constant is k. Okay, k is a constant. This constant we call it proportionality constant, and usually the k value is chosen so such that it becomes one. Okay, k value is chosen such that the k value it becomes one. So usually in SI unit, if it is mass and acceleration. In SI unit, then k value is 1. Or if you choose the both the mass and a in CSS unit also, then this will be k value will be 1. So k value is always chosen to chosen such, that k, such way that the k value becomes 1. Therefore, we get the final result f equals to ma, which is a mathematical expression. From there, we can easily measure force.